So update on the whole sickness thing. Uh, everything burns. Eyes burn and my nostrils burn. And there, it's a lot of stuff coming out of both, really. So if I sniffle at all in any of this, I apologize in advance. I'm sick. And I will stop updating you on how I feel once I'm no longer sick, I suppose. But that day is not today. I still feel sick. And since this very rarely happens to me, I'm a baby, apparently, and I want everyone to know about it. But, you know, being sick or not, we have another Project Soapway winner to talk about and ooh and ah about and do all the things about. And I will tell you more about the third and final winner of Project Soapway Challenge number two in just a minute. But before I do, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things. And you are here for week four of year three, and we are doing the final winner of the Project Soapway Challenge of number two, challenge number two. Yeah, the thankful challenge. And uh, today's winner is Seek Joy Soapery. And uh, Paula, the owner, maker, soap maker extraordinaire, of Seek Joy Soapery is a delightful human, just across the board. And I was very happy to have been able to edit this video and watch her process and also listen to her process because she talked throughout the entirety of her filming, which was very cool because much like with Megan, when we started off with, you know, Harlan's, and I think it's cool when they talk through the video because I, as I'm editing, I can listen to it and get some really good insight into who they are as a person. And by the end of Seek Joy's video, I felt like I had a brand new, like best friend in the world. And it felt like she was sitting there talking to one of her oldest friends. And I love that. I learned why her business was named Seek Joy and it also finally clicked in my mind that her business was named Seek Joy, as in find your joy. I just always kind of mashed it together like Seek Joy, because I'm weird. And I learned about her family. I learned about the things that she is thankful for. I learned about her and her background before she started all the soapy things. And again, like I said, I feel like I uh, made a brand new intimate BFF because of that. And so thank you first and foremost for having done that. And on to all of the making of all of the things, her family was what she was thankful for. And this design is about said family or children, beautiful drop swirl stuff going on with all of this. And so let's get to the video and we can watch her beautiful process and talk about everything she puts in it everything that she is and all of the reasons why you should go and give her all of the love and support you possibly can. Okay, we are here today with Seek Joy and Paula is doing a soap for her family and she is titling the soap Happy. And so we have the birthstone colors, we have the orange, for her oldest child. And we have green for her second child. And uh, we also have uh, pink for her third child. 
and blue for her fourth. And she is going to be doing a very fun drop swirl with this and using her lard recipe, her basic three, which is currently olive, coconut oil, and lard. Now, I do not make lard soaps, just as a general rule, because my client base doesn't support any animal byproduct soaps. But I tell you what, I do love a the bubble from a good lard soap. And I believe at the end of this, is this it? Yes. At the end of this, uh, Seek Joy Paula has given us a lather test, which I'm very excited about because that's a fun little extra, you know, extra bit of fun. And that wasn't even required. So well done, Paula. Appreciate you. And also, yeah, to that lard soaps and bubbles, like the lather, I have a bar in my shower right now from Miss A from Not So Typical. And I'm pretty sure there's lard in that. I don't remember. I know for a fact there's not coconut oil in it. And that lather is so fun. It's like little effervescent, well, not little. There's a lot of lather to it, but like little effervescent bubbles that just feel so nice on the skin. It's delightful. But anyway, this is not about Miss A. Just, you know, hey, shout out. You did a good job. This is about Seek Joy and her soap process. Now, Paula has been doing soap for a little bit, but she's been doing it as a hobby. She like just barely, just recently took the plunge to go ahead and start a business around it which is very cool, very scary, and also very fun because at some point, as we all know, those of us that, you know, do this as a hobby or that just do it in general, so many of our hobbies get kind of expensive. And so even if your only goal when starting a business is to make sure that you can continue paying for your supplies for your rather expensive hobby, that's cool too. What else is cool is all of these emulsion checks that she has going on here. That warms my heart so much to see Sudzers in their videos doing, well, emulsion checks. It's like, oh, that's cool. You guys are, you pay attention to me. That's amazing. Thank you for all of that. But within this video, Seek Joy did a really great job because, well, first she did, she talked throughout the entire thing, you know, which is kind of difficult. And that seems to be one of the main themes that I have seen from this footage, from all the footage from the Sudzers that do talk through the videos. They all mention that they're definitely stepping outside of their comfort zone and that it's difficult to do the talking thing while you're doing the soaping thing. And they all start out kind of rough. They really do. But the interesting thing with all of it is they get into their groove within just a few minutes of making the soap. So their brain is mostly focused on making the soap and their speaking just becomes very natural and it's like they're talking to an old friend. And that's certainly what I felt when I was listening to this footage from Paula. I genuinely felt like I was just having a conversation with one of my oldest and dearest friends. And that was so delightful. And it's such a huge thing because when people are walking into, I've never filmed a video before, I've, you know, what do I say, all of the things, while you're still also focused on a rather complex thing, you know, making soap. I do say making soap is easy because it is, but remembering all of the steps, you know, is going to be your, your hardest part. And so when you combine that with talking while you're doing it, it can be kind of a difficult thing. And so congratulations to everybody that have stepped outside of that comfort zone and done this, you know, including Seek Joy and done it so beautifully. You, you got over that first hurdle of filming and then you immediately got over that second hurdle of talking. 10 out of 10. I, I have been so proud of all of the Sudzers within all of these videos. It's just, it really does blow my mind. I cannot express how amazing it is to watch you guys do something that you might be a little bit uncomfy with and not only do it, do it well. 
Another very interesting thing with all of this when, you know, Paula was talking throughout this video that really struck me was they don't know whether or not their soap is going to be selected. And so they're still talking, which means they're just really getting comfortable. Okay, now on to the pour. And as I said, we are doing some swirly swirls within all of this. And I am here for that. We actually haven't gotten any, uh, not a ton of swirl submissions for any of the Project Soapway stuff. So I am very excited to have some beautiful swirls represented because that's my favorite way to make a soap, really. Just kind of messy swirl. Every bar is different. It's like a cool soap Rorschach test within all of them. Absolutely delightful. I love it. And again, yeah, through all of this, she's talking about her family and her life and all of the things. And she gave me information that I'm not entitled to, you know, information about her children and her life and all of the things that she didn't have to do. And that always really does humble me in a way when a sudzer chooses to share a piece of their life with me. Because again, Seek Joy, while I know her within the Discord and the soapy creations that she does, just like with Megan from Harlands, I don't know know them in ways that I know some of the Sudsers. Granted, that's not a requirement at all by any stretch of the imagination, but when it does happen, when people feel comfortable enough to share information with me about their lives, it really is a humbling moment. And so thank you, Paula, for having done that. I do feel like I know you better and that I've made a new, you know, real friend throughout all of this. And I know your kids and I know your life and I appreciate that. And I'm not actually going to really tell you anything about all of those things because those are Paula's stories to tell. But I will tell you that she's been a nurse for an incredibly long time. Like that's been her life. She is a nurse that has been doing all of that awesomeness in a variety of different ways for a very long time. And she started making soap like a lot of us do. I mean, there are a number of people that start making soaps because somebody had an allergy or because somebody needed some extra assistance with dry skin or, you know, whatever. And then continue to think outside of the box and expand their soapy awesomeness. And before you know it, you have 5,000 different types of soap around you and you're like, oh my God, what have I become? You've become awesome. That's what you've become. You've become a sudzer. And so, yeah, she's much the same, but that's her big career again is nursing. And this has been mostly something that she's been doing as a hobby. And actually within this video, she did state that she hasn't really started her business. Since this video was made, she's she's done that. And so she's taken that plunge too. So everybody, seriously, make sure to go follow all of her socials because it really helped. Yes, we are actually getting to see two different bars in this. This bar, which is the one that she did for the Soapway submission, but also she had made some Halloween soaps around the same time, the purple ones with the green and the black in the background. And she shows us to, to us too. So we can see the cool faces because there are faces in there. See? Soap Rorschach. Swirls are my favorite for that reason. But yes, on to the cut of Paula of Seek Joy's beautiful soap submission for her thankful challenge. And I love the way that all of those colors are still completely represented within her swirls. And that is a sign that she has figured out the whole thickness of the batter, trace and emulsion and all those things really well because uh, the thickness of the batter has everything to do with how your swirls are going to work in a soap. And so she's got that information down pat and I love that. And she's also testing the her, her, her wire cutter there, making sure it's nice and tight. Smart idea. It's a very smart idea. I have definitely spent some time not um, checking the wires and having to replace them as a result if they're too loose. So good, smart, love it. And these bars are absolutely gorgeous. I really do love the swirls here. And here we go. We get to check her 
Yeah, look, it's a face. There's totally a face in there. I love that. That's so super cute. And then the other one almost looks like a Charlie Brown type face that she's going to show us right now. Like, that's very Charlie Brown-esque. I love that. And she said it was completely accidental, but super fun. So those are always the, the kind of bummer bars, right? The ones that are complete accidents. You're never going to be able to accomplish that again, but you're still going to try every time you remake it. But yeah, I actually loved everything about this pour and this design and just hearing Seek Joy speak throughout all of this. She had, you know, dogs coming into the house and she's telling about the dog. She's a fellow soper at midnight, you know, and she just, she had life occurring around her while this was all happening. And it's so completely relatable, right? This is what we do as soap makers. There are not a lot of us that have moved into the soaping world and are doing just this as a business, right? So many Sudzers are doing this as their side hustle and also have their regular nine to five. And even if you don't have your regular nine to five, you have life occurring around you at all times. And so in a lot of ways, you have to make the soap fit into that world and not the other way around. And so sometimes that does mean soaping at midnight and dealing with, you know, husband or kids walking in and saying, hey, mom, what's for dinner? And all the jazz. And so it was completely relatable listening to her life around her while she was doing this. And she did an excellent job. Completely unfazed. She did a beautiful, beautiful soap. And I loved doing the birthstone thing or the colors that, you know, she, it's either birthstones or the colors that she feels represent, best represent her children. For example, her oldest, I believe the actual birthstone is a diamond and she didn't want to put melt and pour into this. So she swapped it out for orange because that's a color that she relates to with her oldest child. And so I loved that, and obviously I'm always a huge sucker for swirls, as I said, but she did such a beautiful job with all of this. I don't remember what she scented this as, and I don't have it in my notes, so she's going to have to tell us, but she is going to give us, as you can see, camera angle's not great for this, but you can, yep, right there on her hands there, just the tips that you can see on the top. Beautiful lather with that soap. This is the same blend, her same basic three blend that she's using right now, and it has a gorgeous lather. I don't hate that. As I said, I don't do lard soaps, but lard soaps have a gorgeous, gorgeous lather. So if you are doing it for a hobby and you don't super care what goes into your soaps or your clientele will be okay with animal products, do a lard soap. They're absolutely gorgeous. Good job, Seek Joy. And there they are, Seek Joy's soaps, and they are beautiful. I love the beautiful little kind of like watercolor effect that's going on with all of that. I haven't actually seen a whole lot of this design within any of the soap submissions for both challenge number one or two, and I liked this. It had a lot of cool colors in it, and also since with Project Soapway challenge number two, thankful, I told them that the parameters were what you're thankful for, but to also submit, you know, a sentence about what the bar represents and what it is that you're thankful for. And so it was based on both of those parameters to select. And so I loved that because family is important and being thankful for family is important. And, you know, Paula giving me information, like kind of personal information in all of the voiceover stuff that she was doing. She was talking while she was making the soap was big. I feel like I know her kids now as well. And, and I'm honored that she trusted me with that information. It's uh, always a humbling moment, really, when a Sudzer will share a piece of their life or the number of times I get emails from people all over the world, or I answer a phone call on a Tuesday and there's someone on the line that took the time to pick up the phone to call me and tell me something nice and why they found value in something that, you know, I have put out there. It's, it's huge. It's a step that nobody has to take. It's information that you 
never have to give up. And when that happens, much like with this video with Paula and Seek Joy, I am blown away and I'm grateful for it. So thank you. Thank you for submitting. Thank you for stepping outside of your comfort zone and filming for the first time. And just thank you for being a sudzer, for being here, for being you and for making an epic soap. I also really appreciated the lather test at the end of all of that and the conversations that she had within the video about her process. She's a lard soap maker and the beautiful, awesome lather that comes from her soaps was an added bonus to all of that really. So that was super awesome. I have put her socials everywhere in the video as well as, you know, again, right now and in the description. And so go send her all of the love. As I said in the video, this is mostly a hobby for her. She's been a nurse her entire life but she has taken the leap and starting that soapy journey like as a business, not just as a hobby. So please go like her socials. It helps so much, so much. I, I know we say it all the time and we want our customers to do it and everything, but we can do it for each other as well. And that's the biggest point of project Soapway is to have all of you, that exist and have this massive talent showcased and celebrated because you deserve to be showcased and celebrated and any way I can help you know facilitate that I'm going to do it so there's that I had so much fun with this challenge this was obviously you know the time of the season to do a thankful challenge this was great the three different soaps four if you count mine again uh, four different ways to approach a theme and all of it was cool I really enjoyed every single one of these soaps and I have been enjoying the Project Soapway challenges oh so very much. So I'm very excited to move on to the next one, which will be in a couple weeks. We will actually be doing two weeks of, you know, me content. So this next week is going to be tea soaps. We will be doing recipes and talking about all things tea, as well as some really pretty designs and an idea that I had for all of that you know, all next week. And then the week following is going to be a week of process and technique. So not quite a full like back to basics playlist, but we will be doing some interesting stuff with technique and process. And then the week after that will be Project Soapway challenge number three. So that's very exciting. Stay tuned for that. I hope you guys had a good time today. I certainly did. Please give Deke Joy all of the love, give her all the support. This is what we do here. This is what the Sudzer community is. This is what you're good at. So I know you'll be good at it this time again. I appreciate each and every one of you. A big, again, extra special congratulations and all of the things to all of the winners thus far. You are all amazing. And as far as the whole joy thing is concerned, I sought it here on the YouTubes at a time where life was weird and strange and I found all of you. And so I like the name Seek Joy. That's well done. Well done, Paula. 10 out of 10. And yeah, anyway, I am out of here for today. I have loads to do and I still want to try to maybe get in some sleep because I'm still recovering from all the things. But thank you for joining me. Thank you for existing. Thank you for being you. All of the things that, you know, I say, but I really super, super mean. I'm thankful for all of you, and I'm never going to stop saying it. So, hope you guys are having a great day, time zone, all the things. I will see you all again in a few days, maybe a day, I'm not really sure, for a round of tea soap recipe process technique design fun. Bye.